we have over 100 trillion bacteria in our colon. So there's this ecosystem down there and we want to make sure that it plays for us, not against us. If we treat it right, we can have this mutualism where we benefit and they benefit. They get this anaerobic environment down there. We just need to provide the nutrients and only 5% of Americans are providing enough nutrients in the form of prebiotics or plant-based high fiber foods for them to metabolize because when they metabolize those foods, they provide short chain fatty acids. So females should have 25 grams, males 38 grams of fiber a day. We're not getting that. So prebiotics are the fibers themselves. They're the, the food that we provide for those different strains. We want a lot of diversity. So we want a lot of different types of plant-based foods to provide for more different diverse strains in that ecosystem. So probiotics are where we have the good bacteria already and we're trying to get it down there. So fermented foods, something pickled or, you know, um, like yogurt or something like that. Lactobacillus acidophilus can actually survive the gastric juice and get down into the colon. But that's kind of a drop in the bucket. You really want to get all these prebiotics to, to form that. And then the postbiotics are the short chain fatty acids, which are acetate, which is two carbons, propionate three, butyrate four. And so most of the lipids that we deal with in the body, they're like 20 plus carbons long, but these are real short and they have a lot of good uh, benefits such as feeding the colonic cells that line our intestines. So they actually provide energy for them. They improve the integrity uh, and the gene expression of those tight junctions, those proteins that help uh, prevent things from getting through. We have things like this guy over here with a faux hawk, a really bad pathogenic bacteria, or maybe we have some kind of protein from gluten that they like to squeeze in between the endothelial, the, excuse me, the epithelial cells there and get into the bloodstream. So if we have good uh, tight junctions there, we don't have that gut permeability that allows them into the bloodstream. So that's, that's what they do. They also will stimulate goblet cells. We have this mucous membrane in our colon and the more mucus we can produce, the, the better the physical barrier to, barrier to keep all those things out that we don't want in our bloodstream. Those short chain fatty acids can also get, go all the way through those cells and get into the portal vein and get into our circulation. And they'll go to different organs like the brain. At the brain, we, you know, to get in the brain, you have the blood brain barrier. They actually work on those tight junctions too, make sure the integrity is good there too. So um, that's really good for, for, for preventing Alzheimer's disease because you don't want things that cause inflammation to get into the brain with the uh, permeability there. They also go into the brain. They'll stimulate vagal stimulation from the brain down to the, uh, to the pancreas to increase insulin production. So we have this food coming in. We don't want a glucose spike. So if we can get insulin to, get, um, to go up, it'll prevent that glucose from going up and help with glucose control, which is really important. It also will tell the hypothalamus, the arcuate nucleus there, that we're satiated, so we're full. It can also go to adipocytes, fat cells, liver cells, and promote weight loss. Uh, scientists can actually look at stool samples. That's how they evaluate the bacteria. And they can see all this diversity in lean people's stools. So they uh, increased diversity correlates with increased and short chain fatty acids. And then obese people, they have this low diversity and low short chain fatty acid production in their stools. So you can actually tell how obese somebody is by looking at their microbiome. And um, there's these diseases uh, of the intestines called inflammatory bowel disease. These are nasty. The two main inflammatory bowel diseases are Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And what ulcerative colitis does and Crohn's disease is just that they provide, they uh, wear away at the lining and make ulcers and erosions. Crohn's disease can actually erode all the way through all four layers of the terminal in small intestine or large intestine and perforate the bowel. So these are really bad. What they find is that they have low diversity in their stool samples of bacteria, that they have low amounts of short chain fatty acid production. And when they look at the barrier, they have thin mucus production all things that can be countered by having the high fiber. And a lot of the high fiber foods, that, some examples of high fiber foods are just fruits and vegetables, beans, nuts. So um, with the fruits, you wanna make sure and eat like the, if you're eating an apple, make sure you eat the rind or cover because that's where all the pectin and fiber is. 
and um, just different, you know, deep green, leafy green vegetables, asparagus, garlic, onions, uh, cruciferous vegetables, all these, hit it with all these different uh, prebiotic sources so that they, all these bacteria will have something to metabolize. This is all anti-inflammatory in nature. It's, um, it uh, is associated with lowered risk of colon cancer. There's a Japanese doctor who actually designed the endoscope for um, colonoscopies. And in the 70s, he had spent six months in Japan where they had a high fiber plant-based diet. And he would spend six months in New York where it's more animal-based. He said the intestines, the colon in Jap Japan very seldom had uh, colon cancer or polyps that lead to poly colon cancer and just real healthy. He'd go to the United States and they were just angry and red, the colon lining with polyps everywhere and colon cancer. And he just saw this huge extreme going from one to the other. Um, if you're interested in some of the stuff discussed in this video, there's a book called Fiber Fueled by Will Boltsovich, is I think how you say his last name. And he's a gastroenterologist. He compiles over 600 different uh, peer-reviewed study uh, journal articles and uh, supports a lot of the stuff that I talk about in this video.